guys. So I wanted to talk about planner piece today. Planner piece is this really big concept in the planner community that you hear mentioned quite a lot. And a lot of people have opinions about it. And it's something that's intrigued me for quite a while because you hear people say, I found planner piece or I thought I'd found planner piece, but actually I realized that I haven't and I've changed my system or there's no such thing as planner piece. It doesn't exist. It's a myth. Or if you think you haven't found planner piece and you keep switching from planner to planner, it's because there's something wrong with your system. And that's the reason why you don't have planner piece. So I think it's a topic that a lot of people find interesting. And it's also something of an enigma because it's like no one can decide if it exists or it doesn't exist. And you get all of these different views on it. So I just wanted to share my experiences and my thoughts on the topic. So first of all, of course, I think everyone would agree that it is possible to use the same planner year after year and be happy about it or not give it much thought. So in that way, it could be said that planner piece is a real thing. But I think that it's really only a real thing in that sense for people who are outside of the planner community. So for example, I use the same planner for about 15 years and I was reasonably happy with it, or at least I didn't give it much thought. And that's because Planners were not a big part of my life at all. It seems crazy to say that now, but um, I used the same like kind of no brand Hebrew planner um, that I bought just because it had the Jewish calendar in it and I didn't give it any more thought than that. Now, looking back, it was woefully inadequate. It, you know, like it was it was too small. Um, it didn't really get it. I didn't have any notes pages. It didn't have a monthly view, like all kinds of things that I would now consider essential it didn't have. So, you know, by my current standards, it was sorely lacking. And yet I didn't give it a second thought for 15 years. <laughs> um, and I think that was because I wasn't, you know, it was kind of like, say something that I just don't really devote much energy to like um, cutlery, silverware. Um, this is not something that is really interesting to me. I don't like, you know, scour Instagram looking for pictures of different cutlery designs or, you know, like put like 10 different uh, cutlery sets in my basket on Amazon and try to compare like which, which design I like better and which type of metal I like better and which handles I like better. I'm sure that there are people out there who are really interested in cutlery design and they might do that. But for me, as long as it works and I can use it and, you know, I don't know, um, the tines of the fork don't fall off, like it's fine. <laughs> um, and that's kind of how planners were for me for a long time, even though actually I, I always liked stationery, but I think I kind of, I didn't really somehow allow myself to explore the option or I, it, it was kind of dormant for a long time. It was just not something that I devoted time or energy or money to. Um, so I think that that like it definitely I, I know that it's possible to use the same planner for a long time and, you know, not not really find it an issue. But I don't quite think that that is the same as planner piece, because I think that that only works if you're outside the planner community and you think of planning as something like totally, totally functional that you just don't give much thought to. Um, so that's that's not really the same as is the concept of planner piece if you are in the planner community and planning is a hobby for you. So um, that said, obviously, if some like global decree were passed and we were all told from now on, you have to pick one planner and use that forever until the end of time, of course, we would be able to do it. We would be sad because, you know, we know all of the options out there, but we could do it. Um, so you know, it's, it's, it's totally possible to use the same planner and, and be okay with it. But I still think that's not planner piece because once you, once you enter the planner community um, and you start watching all the videos and, you know, you find out of all the different brands and the different layouts and the different planning systems, it really, it, it's your hobby. And I think that this is sort of at the crux of the issue is that it's a hobby for us. It's something that we enjoy. And if something is your hobby and you like it, half the fun is in experimenting and trying out what's out there. So, I mean, like for an enthusiast, if we compared this to some other type of hobby, like, 
um, I don't know, cinema, let's say, people who like to go to the cinema, if, you know, like some, somebody who really enjoys like going to the cinema and watching films was told, you have to pick one film and you can only go see that film for the rest of your life. Like that would sound ridiculous. Of course, nobody would want to do that. Then you could say, well, like you're wasting all of this money, like going to see different films all the time. You could just buy one film on DVD and watch that and not have to spend any more money. Like, wouldn't that be good enough? And, and so I think if you look at it that way, the idea that we should only have the same planner or, you know, like find the perfect planner and only use that seems kind of silly because I think like for me, that's certainly how it is since I've kind of allowed my my inner love of stationery to um, find its true expression. Um, I I enjoy seeing what's out there and trying it out. So like when I first got into the YouTube planner community, it was really exciting. And um, the first thing that happened, I've, I've mentioned this before, is that I got a Filofax Flex. And um, so that, at that point, I decided that it was time to upgrade and get rid of my Hebrew planner, which I didn't really like that much. And I started off with the Moleskine. So I started off with the day per page. It was black. Um, although if, if I'd known that this, if I'd been able to get this color at the time, I definitely would have got um, a more exciting color. But so it was black. And I picked it because I thought, for a long time, I haven't had enough room to write in. So now I'm going to have lots of room. I'll have a day per page. That will be great. And that was really the extent of thought that I gave to it. I didn't, you know, investigate more and see, well, actually, you could have a week to view and maybe that would be good. Or, you know, like there are all these different brands out there because I knew about Moleskine and I thought that looks nice. I like it. So I first tried that and and then I decided that it was actually, it was too bulky and that was what made me want to switch. So at that point, I don't feel like it was the idea of like the grass is always greener or wanting to try out new planners just for the sake of it. It was actually a practical thing. I was tired of like schlepping around this like big, heavy day per page A5 book along with another um, uh, volant for notes in the flex and I just didn't want to do it for another year. And so that was what made me switch to um, a week on two pages. And then around that time, I started to really get into the videos and I found out about Homo Nichis and I, I was instantly intrigued by that and I wanted to try it out and I felt like I couldn't justify it. And at that point I was in this mindset that like, I've got my planner for the year, that's it. Um, I, you know, I can try another planner in 2016. And so, then I, I came up with this idea, like, what could I use it for? Because I really wanted to try it and I couldn't stand waiting a whole year. Um, and now looking back, that seems silly because like, why wait another year? Like, you know, it, again, like if you want to see a film, like, do you have to wait until um, it comes out on Blinkbox? Or I don't know if you have, I don't think, I think Blinkbox is a UK thing. It's like, uh, it's kind of like Netflix, um, but you know, you can just buy um, films or TV shows and then you like you have them sort of instead of a subscription anyway it's like saying like why wait until it comes out that I have to wait until it comes out on Netflix or Blinkbox and then I can watch it I can't see it in the cinema um, like obviously you the problem is that like if you're going to the cinema like every day then it gets expensive but the point is if if you you know if, if you have enough in your budget for it then like why wait so finally I got the Hobonichi and I was like okay I'll use it for a home planner and then I felt like it didn't work for a home planner because we weren't utilizing all the space and that was kind of unsatisfying to me. So again, like I feel like this argument of like, well, um, that was because your system wasn't good. I don't think that that's, in, in some cases it might be true, but I, I feel like that's not usually what, what motivates people to switch planners. I think that there are a few different reasons why planner addicts switch planners. And I, at least from my experience, it's, it's not because your system is no good. Like, I, I kind of, tell me if you think that I'm wrong, but I kind of feel like it's relatively rare for someone to like literally have planner fail as in like they're missing appointments or um, their planner is just not working at all. Like it doesn't do what it's supposed to do unless they don't like it. So I'll, I'll get onto that in a moment. But I, I don't, I don't know. I don't feel like this system being, being wrong is, is a major motivation. I think it's more, a number of other things that, that I will discuss. So one reason I think can be is um, that you kind of feel like the planner that you got is not 
suitable for the use that you intended it for. So for example, if I put this aside for the moment, um, when I got the Hobonichi and I felt like it didn't work as a home planner, it was true. It, it just, it was like too much planner for a home planner for what I needed it for. I just, I didn't need the daily pages. And I think it, that sort of made me feel unsatisfied because I, I, I felt like it's like it was speaking to me and it was saying, you're not using me to the fullest of my potential. And that makes me sad. Um, I, I've just been reading um, the, the KonMari book and she talks about, um, you know, like your books feeling sad because they're squished at the bottom of a pile or because you neglect them and, you know, don't don't enjoy seeing them. Um, and I can really relate to that because I feel like the, the Hobonichi was talking to me and saying, like, you're not using me properly. And OK, so that might seem crazy, but I think a lot of you will will agree with me. So I switched out of that for the home planner. So I could say it didn't work for me in the home planner, but I discovered through that that it would be perfect for me as a work planner. And so I started using a cousin as my work planner and I've been using it for 10 months and it's perfect. I would never want to switch. And the Moleskine day per page and then the Moleskine week on two pages that I was using were were not perfect for me. So I can say with the cousin that I feel like I found planner piece. So like through switching and experimenting and trying different planners for different things, I did actually eventually arrive at the one that I, I think has everything that I want. I love the way it looks. I love the size. I love the layout. Um, it has everything that I need and I, I use everything that it has, if you see what I mean. So I think in that respect, yes, planner piece. Like I just can't imagine finding another planner that I would like better because it's perfect. So, so I think that one reason for switching is because you feel like the planner that you have isn't like you start to think of all of the different things that you want and you, you know that it doesn't have that um, or that it has things that you don't want. So another reason I think is, is simply just the, what, some people might say is this idea of the grass is always greener, but what I think is just the kind of joie de vivre and um, just really enjoying seeing different planners and, you know, wanting to try them out and see what they're like. And maybe you'll like them better than what you were using before. Maybe you won't, but that's kind of beside the point because it's the journey that's exciting. So, um, for example, when... I came into the planner community, as I've mentioned in other videos, I was completely a bound planner person. And I think I really still am a bound planner person at heart, but I wanted to try out other types of planners. So I ended up buying a whole bunch of ring planners and you can see some of them here. And after using them for a while, I came to the conclusion that I'm not a ring planner person for various reasons, which I've discussed in my video on the pros and cons of ring planners, but I still I love the the concept of ring planners. I love the fact that you have these, you know, you can have beautiful designs. You can have all of these different colors. I love the idea that they last forever, basically, and you can just replace what's inside them and that they're customizable. And there are a lot of things that I really like about them, but they don't work for me as planners. But through that, and like through experimenting with them, I discovered that what they work best for me as is um, storage binders. So like, for example, this one I'm using to store recipes in. So um, I subscribe to this magazine called Vegan Life and it has a whole bunch of stuff. It's a great magazine, by the way. If you live in the UK, you should definitely try out Vegan Life. Um, but they have recipes. And so before, like when they had a recipe, I never knew what to do with it. And now I just tear it out, punch it and put it in here. And then I know that if we want to try it at some point, I'll have them all in here. And it's nice because I know what to do with them and I know where to find them. And it's kind of a nice way to get to use this beautiful binder, which just wouldn't have worked for me as a planner. Um, like similarly, this one is what I use to put all of the stuff for our um, having to do with our, our flat apartment. So like, you know, water bills, um, invoices, like any kind of records of um, like stuff that we've had done to the flat. Um, colors of paint for the walls, like things like that, which I would have had anyway, but just not in as pretty a vessel. So that was another way that experimenting kind of led to planner piece because I would be sad at the thought of not getting to have any ring binders. Um, but this is a sort of good way to work with the fact that 
they just didn't work for me as as planners um and so i think that like kind of through experimenting you you get to learn a lot of useful stuff and do actually end up with something that you're happy with um and and the motivation for that definitely was just that you know like i was curious and i wanted to try it out and you could say like well you know you're just thinking oh perpetually like this might be better this might be better but I don't think it's I think it, part of it can be that um, and it could be that you try out something new and then you realize that it's not better and then you go back to what you were using before but I don't see what's wrong with that because like definitely there is this you know this idea that um people are just continually searching for something better and something better and they could just, you know, make do with the one that they have. Like, as I said before, of course we could, but I don't think that's the point because if there's so many out there and you know about them because you're watching the videos and you're seeing the pictures on Instagram, you start to wonder what would be best for you. So maybe one reason that um, some people are able just to use the same planner for year on end is because they haven't really thought about it like like me as i said with the hebrew planner when i was using that it wasn't because that was the best planner for me um it was just because i didn't question it so like i've said it didn't have any room for notes and the pages were really small it was smaller than an a6 and i was constantly running out of room and if i wrote notes then i would like fill up the whole page and the the page just had um it was like an hourly layout um so I would constantly like fill up the page and then start writing on the next page and then get into this situation where I had no more room to write down appointments and I'd be writing them in the margins and it was a huge mess. And like, you know, looking back, people would have been, people would have said, if I'd made a video about that, people would have said like, are you crazy? That's the wrong planner for you. <laughs> you need more room. Um, but I just didn't think about it. it. For some reason, like it seems ridiculous, but it didn't occur to me that I could go to, um, you know, a stationary shop and find a different planner. I think part of it was because I I liked it being in Hebrew and that was the only one that was available um, that I could get in London that wasn't um, gigantic. And I, I didn't want to have one that was like A4 size. Um, but it, like, I just, I just didn't really think about the fact that there are other options. It's kind of like if you had the same month the same thing for lunch every day and then you find out that like there's a whole menu and then you want to try everything on it to see what you like best so like for example I never had a vertical week on two pages and so I wanted to see what that was like um, and then when I found out about the Hobonichi that it had a monthly section I'd never had a, a month on two pages and so I started to like be curious about that as well and I was thinking what would life be like if I could plan in a monthly layout as well as in a weekly layout um, because by that time I was using a week on two pages and I knew that I liked it um, and because I'd already used a day per page I knew that I liked that as well and so the idea of being able to have all of those layouts was just intoxicating um, so I think through experimenting with different layouts you you kind of realize what you like best what you like what you don't like what you can live without um, and then you you know you kind of build up your list of deal breakers whereas if you just use the same planner like of course you could get by like you would have a place to write down your appointments but you might not be able to you can sort of get all you all you potentially could out of a planner um so i feel like now that i have a place to write notes as much as i want it's really useful because i keep writing things down that i'll then be able to go back to and reference which i I couldn't do before with my previous systems and that's something that I feel like it's improved my quality of life um obviously I got by before it's not like I couldn't get anything done and I you know I, I still did things and <laughs> like achieved stuff and um it's not like I'm saying like oh you know my life was a complete disaster and now that I have space for notes it's like totally transformed me and I've become king of the world like no but I still feel like it has enriched my life and um so that's like kind of another thing that can come from experimenting. Um, so I think sometimes um, 
the I mean, the broken system maybe can be part of an issue that like you're you're looking for a different planner because there's something that's like kind of not um you like is, is not quite right with your planner as in like you forget to use it say I know that that is an issue for um for some people like for me that's never been an issue I've always used a planner um and so I've I've never had this issue of like kind of Mm, you know forgetting to look at it or going for weeks on end without checking it which I know is is an issue for people and I think that maybe this is one of the reasons why there's this concept that if you're switching from planner to planner it's because your system doesn't work I think maybe that's what's meant by it is in by your system not working it means that you stop using your planner or you you don't like it um or maybe not that you don't like it but that it just you don't use it um because I, I have heard this from from people um in real life so to speak um I have a colleague who said actually quite a few colleagues who've said um that they have planners and they just never use them which to me is just totally baffling <laughs> as I'm sure it is to many of you um but like for example um James has this problem so I've had some experience with this close to home he he likes the idea of having a planner um and he'll like kind of start off using it and be really enthusiastic about it and use it for a few weeks and write everything down and like, you know, do a setup and decorate it. And yes, decorating is not only for girls. More on that in another video. But um, then after a while, he just stops checking it. And then like weeks will go by and, and then he'll say like, oh, I forgot my dentist appointment. I'll be like, didn't you have in your planner? And be like, no, I don't know where my planner is. I haven't used it in weeks. And this is like a cycle that kind of repeats itself. Um, and so I, I don't know what causes this, this phenomenon, um, but I feel like maybe switching different planners can be a way of trying to um, alleviate that issue. Because if you have a new planner and you're excited about it, then you want to use it for a while. And so I think like in James's case, definitely getting a new planner can like kind of revitalize the interest in planning. Um, and and so that's actually a good thing because anything that sort of gets you to plan is good right if that's if that's what you want to do um and so even if having a new planner like in in theory is not as good as just being able to use the same planner consistently if you have this issue where you stop using your planner and then you get a new one and then you want to use it again then I, I don't know it's possible that over time you get into the habit if you sort of do that often enough that you will use it all the time um, but like, I think that that, that process can be useful because otherwise it could be hard to sort of get motivated again to use it. So like with James, it's interesting because he's switched between different planners and he said like the first one was a present and he was really enthusiastic about it. And then he stopped using it. And he said afterwards that he felt like, like it wasn't his style and he didn't really like the planner, which I think is totally legitimate. Um, that is possible. And then he got a new one that he liked much better. It was um, Safiano, the Springboard Safiano edition, which is like kind of pink with a green strap. And he really liked that. And he used that probably for a few months. Um, and then he thought maybe he would switch to pocket size and he switched to pocket size. And then around that time, this was a few months ago, um, I was like kind of getting all these bound planners and he, he sort of got enticed by the idea of a bound planner. And so he switched or his plan was to switch to this um, um, paper blanks planner, which was one that I'd got in a, it was a collection of paper blanks planners, um, like this one, but smaller. And the problem with it, I think, was that it didn't start until January. And so he, he got really enthusiastic about it, but it, this was like November. And so basically he didn't have a planner for two months because he'd kind of decided he didn't want to use the pocket file effects anymore. And so he was using um, um, a Leuchtturm notebook, which was undated, and he was using it just kind of like as a daily brain capture. And that quickly, like kind of, he, he stopped using that. And then basically he didn't have a planner until the paper blank started in January, like just last week. And by then he totally got out of the habit of planning. And so we decided that drastic action was needed and he switched back to the Safiano, the, the personal size Safiano. And now he's like planning again, he's really happy and it feels like going back to, you know, like kind of um, see a long lost friend. And he said that he's decided that he's definitely a ring planner person and that the bound planner just somehow wasn't working. He's really happy to be back in the rings. So 
it could be that um, after a while he'll stop planning again and then he'll need to do something different again. But whatever like kind of, you know, keeps you sort of on the planning wagon, I guess, um, even if it's it's switching, I think that that's a good thing. So I think that that could be another reason for switching. And it could be that in that case, maybe eventually you will find after you've switched a, a while for, you know, some amount of time with different planners, you will realize that there was one that helped you more than any other. And you'll go back to that. Like, I think James has had the most success with a personal sized Filofax. And so it could be that he will sort of have to experiment periodically, but then he'll go back to that and that that will be in a way like his planner piece. Um, the one that, you know, he sort of, it's like coming home, I guess, after you've been traveling, you, you might think that you like it better um, in another city or another country and then you come home and, and you're happy. Um, but occasionally you have to go out again. So that that I think is perhaps another form of planner piece is like not that you're always using the same planner forever, but that there's one that you just keep coming back to. Um, I think another another kind of issue of like switching um, versus staying in the same planner is that um, if you like um, if you like planners, then you're sort of going to get a bit restless just by nature if you can only use the same planner um, or the same planners. And I think that this is a reason why a lot of us develop so many different uses for different planners, just because we want to be able to have a bit of planner variety. Um, and so like if I had to choose one planner now and I could only use that planner kind of like a perpetual one book July, like I would choose this without a second thought. This is like my main planner, but it would just break my heart to think that I couldn't use my weeks anymore or that I couldn't use the paper blanks because I love them as well. Um, and so I think like if I felt like I was completely locked and could never try another new planner, even though I think this has everything that I need. Um, another aspect is that I like having more than one planner for different things and I'd be sad for one just because I, I find it more functional having different planners for different things but also just because I enjoy having different planners um, and I think that like kind of um, if I decided that I wanted to change at some point it's not necessarily a failure it's just part of the journey so, like I said, there's some cases where I really feel like I have found planner piece through experimenting. So one was with the cousin. Um, another one is with my personal planner. So I started off the idea of having a planner for personal stuff in a personal sized uh, ring planner. And I went through a couple of different ones. Um, and then I switched to a pocket filofax. Um, but I think that I was already starting to feel like something about the rings was bugging me. And um, so I, I tried um, a moleskin for a while because I missed bound planners and that didn't work because it didn't have all the sections that I'd got used to having in the file of facts. So I wanted somewhere for notes and somewhere um, for like YouTube video stuff. And, um, you know, like I had all these different sections which was one of the lessons I guess that I learned from having a bound planner, um, a ring planner is that you can have different sections for different things. And I kind of wanted to carry that with me. And so then when I, I found the weeks that turned out to be perfect because it's a bound planner, which I really like, but because it has all these notes pages, I could have a section for YouTube and a section for things to buy and a section for general notes and um, a place to like track, um, you know, like water intake and all of these other things that I'd started tracking with the Filofax. And so now I feel like I've, I've reached planner piece with this as well, because it sort of has all of the elements that I want, which I learned about through, you know, experimenting with different planners. And now I, I can't imagine wanting to switch out of this. Although, you know, like I said, if, if it turned out in future that I found something that I liked even better through experimenting, that's fine. Um, I don't, I, I don't think that there's anything wrong with it. Just like no one would expect us only to wear the same brand of shoes forever and like to commit and you're a failure if you ever switch to another brand of shoes or God forbid, if you have two pairs of shoes. Um, so I think again, if we, if we look at it from the perspective of something else that is 
quite commonly done in, you know like either another hobby um or you know like something else that you that you buy it wouldn't be considered ridiculous to have more than one for different purposes um, or occasionally to want to try something new so i don't see why it should be any more so for planners it's just that i think because in in the sort of like the wider world um people use planners the way i used to which is you just buy one every year you use it and then you recycle it or whatever and then you buy a new one and you don't care how it looks or how it feels or what the paper quality is like or what the font is like and so i think from that perspective we're maybe like carrying some of those ideas with us and really like i feel like it's more constructive to look at things from a planner addict perspective um in which case, you know, it's it's perfectly reasonable to want to try different things and see what works best and for which purpose. So I think that um, for me, the thing that works best um, is having a mix of steady planners like this is perfect for my work planner. Um, this one is perfect for my personal planner. Um, and I also feel like another case where I think I've I've reached planner piece is with this from my home planner. So um, this is a paper blanks uh, bound planner and I just love it. And this is another case where I switched like five times maybe in 2015. And um, I think at one point um, I was trying to decide which which of several options to use for 2016. And, um, you know, so then there were like um, there was a suggestion came up that you know, like if you want to switch all the time it means there's something wrong with your system and switching won't help but I love this I, and I think it's something that you feel like I think that you know if a planner is not working for you or if you're not completely happy with it and it could be a reason that would be totally ridiculous to the rest of the world like the one that I had before this was a spiral planner and I just didn't like spirals I d just don't like spiral binding um, and I knew from the beginning that I didn't like it, but I thought maybe I could deal with it. And then I realized that I couldn't. And every time I looked at it, that bugged me. And obviously, if I was told you have to use this planner, that's it. I would live with it. But knowing that there were other possibilities out there just kind of heightened the idea that I was not happy with it. And since switching to this, I'm so, so happy with this. Um, by the way, just a side note, you might have seen this if you follow me on Instagram. Um, my mum found these um, awesome stickers, a whole bunch of like different really cool stickers um, from when I was a kid and sent them to me. And they're like over 30 years old and they still stick, which I just think is amazing. And it's just very exciting. So um, that's like some cool planner girl nostalgia. <laughs> um, I'm getting to use these vintage stickers from my childhood. So yeah, so I just know now, like there's no way I would want to switch. I love this. I love the way it looks. I love the layout. I love the paper. I love everything about it. And I, I don't want to switch. Um, so planner piece, planner piece, um, planner piece. This is another one. This is my gratitude journal. And I I tried, um, this is a Hobonichi A6, and I tried a Hobonichi A6 last year as a home planner, and it didn't work as a home planner, but it's perfect as a gratitude journal, and I can't imagine ever wanting to use something else as a gratitude journal. So, like all of these, I feel like I have reached planner piece, um, and then with the reference binders as well. So, I think that um, planner piece does exist, but it might mean different things to different people. And for me, it's kind of a balancing act that sort of has to be um, level with the satisfaction of the desire for new planners and to, to, to experiment, which I also think is a kind of pretty intrinsic part of being a planner enthusiast um, for, for most of us anyway. Um, I'm not sure. I mean, I maybe there are people who are like total planner. I mean, I guess there are actually because you see a lot of people who just have an Aaron Condren and that seems to be the most common one for like people who just have that and just have the one planner and use that year after year. Um, and I could imagine if I had to just using Hobonichis and, and nothing else. So it is possible, I think, to be a planner addict and really into planning and the planner community, but only use one planner. But I think for a lot of us, it, it also comes with just curiosity about trying different ones. So for me, for maximum planner satisfaction, nay, indeed, peace, um, 
I say the following recipe works best. So a mix of sort of unicorns, as in like planners that I can't imagine not wanting to have, that I want to have year after year. Um, so for me, it's the Hobonichis, paper blanks. Um, and then this one, this is um, the Levenger Circa notebook, which I use for lists. And this is the perfect thing for lists because like a ring bound planner you can detach things move things around add new paper but for me um it works better than a ring planner because the rings always get in the way for me writing but um the discs don't so that was like kind of another i think uh, example of planner piece that came from experimenting um so yeah a mix of like sort of unicorns or planners that i just want to have forever and switching out um so I think planner piece exists and it can be achieved, but only in combination with continuing the planner journey. Because I think, I guess an important part of, um, oh, well, planner happiness is, is the journey. So I feel like this, maybe this emphasis on planner piece is kind of focusing on the destination, um, but neglecting the importance of the journey and so that's why I think that you can have both you can have your sort of one true planners that you that you love and you don't want to switch out but then you also need a sort of constant infusion of, of new planners and um, so I'm kind of trying to work out how to like get the balance without ending up with 50,000 planners and I think that the best way is to have like say one planner I mean, like one designated purpose that can easily be switched out so that um, if I if I want to like switch a new planner that I have one of my various planners that's kind of designated for that, that that's the one that can be switched. Um, and that like that's the way that I'll kind of be able to experiment. Um, not that I think that there's anything wrong with um, getting a new planner just because you're, you're curious to see what it's like and um, you might want to give it away or um, even not not use it, but just have it there and that that makes you happy. I think that that is also perfectly valid, although it might seem odd, but um, I think that's another possibility. But my sort of goal is I'd like to use them. And so um, that's, I think, how Planner Piece works for me. Um, and then for others, like I said, like James, it's probably more of a, a kind of um, having like a home base that you sort of wander out from and then you come back to. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think, so I think for a lot of us, um, it's a combination It and feeling like you have to have your one true planner and that's it, I think maybe is, for me, it would be, is a frustrating way of thinking of it. I'd rather think of it as there, there is planner piece and also the planner journey and together they make planner bliss. So I hope that you enjoyed these um, planner ramblings and um, as always, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it and I will be back soon with another video. Bye.